solihullradio.com. You are listening to That Thursday Show with me, Kate Sinclair. Uh, guys, that was Jacqueline by Circa Wave. That is their new single. They are releasing a new album coming next year, so keep your eye- eyes peeled out for that. Guys, I'm really excited because tonight we have got quite a different show for you. Um, we are going to talk about climate change. Now, climate change is something that we're hearing a lot about in the media at the moment. In my opinion, we are not talking about it enough. So tonight, I'm really excited to say that a young climate activist will be coming into the studio tonight. Her name is Katie Riley, and she is such an inspiration. Um, She's only about 16, 17 years old, and she is leading the Youth Strike for Climate Change marches that I've also been to. Um, I met her briefly at one of these marches in Birmingham. I think it was sometime last year, or last academic year. Um, So it's going to be such a privilege talking to her in the studio tonight. Really looking forward to it. Um, So Katie's popping in at 7 o'clock, and until then, I'm going to be playing my favourite new music at the moment. Kid you not, the past few months, some of my favourite artists have been releasing some new singles. So yeah, I'm going to play you all of that right now. One of my favourite artists is Jake Bug. Um, I've seen him play before, and he has just dropped a new single called Kiss Like the Sun. I'm going to play that for you right now. This is Jake Bug. Got my mind wrapped around the taste 
Jake Bug um, at Tramlines, which is a really great festival in Sheffield. Uh, I saw him there two summers ago and it was kind of disappointing because where me and my mates were stood, there was a massive pillar right in front of us. So I never actually saw him. I just heard his music. Um, but yeah, I really like Jake Bug. That's his new single. It came out on the 14th of November. Um, yeah, he reminds me of school. A lot of my mates at school loved Jake Bug and it reminds me of the school bus, to be honest. We used to listen to a lot of Jake Bug on the school bus. Um, so yeah, I, I love him and I'm really excited for some new music that hopefully he'll be bringing out for us all soon. Um, that same summer that I saw Jake Bug behind the pillar, um, I also saw Bring Me the Horizon for the first time at Leeds Festival. Now, I'm going to be honest, I don't listen to Bring Me the Horizon that much, but they are a really good band and they were my first gig that I ever went to in which I crowd surfed at. I wasn't expecting it. My best mate picked me up and threw me off um, and off I went flying. And unfortunately, I actually did knock somebody's glasses off and they also went flying with me. So if you're listening right now, I apologise for losing your glasses in a mosh pit. Um, but they've also got out a new single called Ludens. Um, I'm going to play that for you right now. This is Bring Me The Horizon, Ludens. Some resist the future, some refuse the past Either way it's messed up if we can't unplug the fact That a world covered in cables was never allowed to last So don't act so surprised when the program starts to crash Form a connection when we can't even shake hands You're like the sense when you bleed on me We part in the shadows, hang out in the gallows Stuck in a loop for eternity the flowers never bloom, will you retry? Or let the pain resume? I need a new leader, we need a new leader So come outside, it's time to see the tide It's out of sight, but never out of mind I need a new leader, we need a new leader And stones may break my bones, but soon the sting will pass. But names can dig so many graves, you won't know where to stand. And I don't feel secure no more unless I'm being followed. And the only way to hide myself is to kill the hell of a show! How do I? Form a connection where we can't even shake hands. You're like a phantom greeting me. We plot in the shadows, hang out in the gallows, stuck in a loop for eternity.
I need a new leader. We need a new Luda. Luden by Bring Me the Horizon. I really like that song. Um, to be honest, I really like Bring Me the Horizon, and I wish I listened to them a bit more. I always say that. I say I wish I listened to them. I just should start listening to them more. Um, so, yeah, loads of my favourite artists are bringing out new music at the moment, and it's really exciting for me. I feel like you go through a period of time when you're kind of waiting for your favourite bands to bring out new stuff, and then they bring them all out at once. Um, and one of my favourite bands in the universe is Cortina's. Cannot get enough of them. I've seen them twice. First time I saw them, it was actually one of my first gigs ever, I think. I must have been about 15. And me and my mate Maddie, we went to go see them at First Direct Arena in Leeds. Such a sick gig. And it, that was kind of one of those gigs that really introduced me to the world of music. And I thought, right, this is I love it. I love it so much. Um, and the second time I've seen them was at Reading Festival. No, I tell a lie. It was at Leeds Festival last year. Again, sick band, um, and they've just brought out a new single called More Again Forever. Now, their new album is dropping next year. Um, cannot wait. The new single is a little bit different to their usual stuff, but you can definitely tell that it's still them. They've still got that mank attitude about them. So, yeah, this is More Again Forever by the Cortinas. Cannot wait for their new album, More Again Forever. <laughs>
quite a different song for them, I think. I'm quite a fan. I've been following them for years. I don't know how many Cortinas fans have got out there tonight, but if you aren't a fan, then you need to get your act together and start listening to them because the Cortinas are incredible. Um, I've actually just applied for Manchester University, so fingers crossed I get accepted. Um, but if I went there, I would be so happy. My first choice is actually Edinburgh, but the music in Manchester is incredible. Um, being a northerner myself, there is a bit of beef actually between Leeds and Manchester, but I won't get into that. Um, but Manchester is a sick place for any venue. It's a sick place for, for up-and-coming bands in particular. So yeah, I'm really excited to, to hopefully be able to go to that university and get involved in what's going on down there. Or I should say up there, because it's up north. Um, yeah, tonight, guys, we have got quite a different show for you because we are talking all about climate change. Once a month, I try and get young people into the studio and talk to me about current issues that affect us, our generation. Um, and climate change is possibly one of the biggest issues that my generation will ever face, if not the biggest. Um, actually, I will say definitely the biggest biggest issue. Um, so it's going to be really interesting talking to Katie tonight. If you guys want to be part of that, that debate, that talk, I really encourage you to get involved. So you guys can email me at studio at solihullradio.com or message studio uh, and text your message studio to the number 822 to eight start your message with the word studio um, but yeah get involved guys i want to hear about your opinions on climate change particularly if you're young people i want to hear your thoughts um but until then we, we've got to wait until seven o'clock i'm afraid until then i'm going to be playing some of my favorite new music at the moment and one band that i absolutely love are the dmas now i have not listened to the dmas properly for quite some time um but they are they are a band that i followed for years uh, I think they're from Australia. I want to say Australia. Um, their their style is quite different. It's very indie, very chilled out. Um, and they've just released a new single called Silver. came out in October, so we are f a few months behind. Um, but this is Silver by the DMAs. Proper love this. Get behind these guys because they, I don't think that they're at that peak yet. Um, they're doing so well. And I think in the next few months and years, they are going to blow up. So this is DMAs with their single Silver. Did you feel like heaven? Did you ring like silver in the wasted light? Still, I'm trying to find Did you sink through the battle call? Did you ring like silver in the wasted light? Still, I'm trying to find your eyes It's funny that I think of you right now Knowing of the years that turn to cloud I'm still coming down And you know it ain't that way Feeling all the things I could not say I'm still coming down You're still coming
um, that song does something to me. You know, you get those songs that just make you feel really emotional. It's one of those songs. I've been listening to it quite a lot recently. And tonight I was walking through Solly Hall, listening to that in my headphones. And I just thought, you know what? Life is really good right now. Um, one of those songs that make me feel really emotional. I don't know why. Um, guys, I've played a lot of Alfie Templeman on the show. I do not regret that. I will not apologise. I think Alfie Templeman is possibly one of the greatest artists of our time. He's on his way up. Okay, that was quite a bold statement, I am aware. But he's only 17 years old, and this is the start of his career. I just, I'm so excited to see where he takes this. Um, he's just released his first album called Don't Go Wasting My Time. I've had that on repeat. Like, it is my go-to album. It's on my bedroom chill playlist. I think it is so incredible. Um, and I've been playing a lot of the singles from that, from that album. One of my favourite songs that he's got right now is Movies. I think he's just so quirky and different and he doesn't try too hard, which is why I really like him. So I'm going to play you yet again, Alfie Templeman. This is his single. No, it's not a single. It's just part of the album. This is Movies by Alfie Templeman. <laughs> because I missed out on the chance to see him live. Um, I can't remember who he was supporting, but he was supporting a band that me and my mates were going to go see. And we spent too long in the pub, so we never actually went to go see his set. So our priorities were completely wrong then. Um, but yeah, if anybody wants to buy me a Christmas present and you see Alfie Templeman on tour, then you know what to get me. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm a massive fangirl of him right now. One band that I have seen a lot of, though, are The Blossoms. Um, they seem to be at every festival that I ever go to. I think I've seen them at Leeds Fest, Tramlines and Reading Festival. 
So basically, all the festivals I've been to, um, I've, I've seen them play about three, four times. Uh, I, I'm going to be honest. I think they're slightly underwhelming as a live as a live band, but I do like them definitely. You know, on iTunes and Spotify and things, do enjoy their music. Just as a live band, they're, they're a little bit underwhelming. Um, but they are also producing new music at the moment. I'm hoping there's going to be a new album on the way. Uh, but for now, we've got a new single called The Keeper. I'm going to play that for you right now. This is The Blossoms, The Keeper. I wander through these dreams, dreams you keep. I was lost, but now. shows on the on the radio and it's really exciting being part of a of a new radio station that's kind of at the beginning of its life um we are looking constantly for feedback so if you guys have got any suggestions that you want to give us then please email us at studio at solihullradio.com this is meant to be a communal radio station so your input makes a massive difference and it is really the basis of what we do here so if you guys are looking you know to get on on air or online because it's an online show um, or if you want to come into the studio or talk to us about anything that you've got, you, you know, you're thinking about, then please drop us a message, studio at solihullradio.com. So guys, I, every night before I come onto the show, I always like scroll through iTunes and um, I'm an iTunes girl, not a Spotify girl. I do apologise. There's a bit of like battle between them, which is better, Spotify or iTunes? Don't really know. Probably Spotify, but I've got iTunes, so there you are. Um, but I always look at the new songs, new releases. And I've just discovered a new band called Girl Ray. Um, I'm not going to lie, I don't know too much about them. 
but they've just got a new single called Girl. I really like it. I'm going to play that for you right now. This is a new band that I've just discovered, Gil Ray, with their song, Girl. It's such an easy vibe. I really like it. Um, guys, I love Khalid as well. Khalid, Khalid. Um, I wanted to go see him when he went on tour, but tickets were about 100 quid, and I have like 6p in my bank account, so that really was not happening. Um, but he's got a new single as well called Up All Night. Really like him. My chill playlist has got a lot of Alfie, Alfie Templeman and a lot of Khalid on. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for some new chill inspiration, then Khalid is definitely one to put onto your playlist. This is his new single, Up All Night. Khalid, everybody. Take me round the world and back again As I'm searching for my short thing Oh, that's something that I'm wondering Where I'm going when my story ends Trying to even matter anyway, you know Focusing on top of my pain Cause 
Purple Night by Khalid. Really like Khalid. I think I love his voice. He's got such a great voice. Um, another artist I want to play for you is Stormzy. Now I don't listen to a lot of rap. I listen to a lot of Machine Gun Kelly, but that's because I have a massive massive crush on him. Um, so I low key stalk him. Um, but no, I really like Stormzy. I really like his um, new stuff at the moment. I'm going to play for you one of his latest songs. But I first got um, kind of I first heard about Stormzy when he released a few songs a few years back. Blinded by Your Grace was one that I really liked. If you haven't heard that, listen to that. Um, but I just really like what he stands for. If you do follow him, then you might know he is relatively political and some of the things that he says are just quite inspiring. So I, I do get behind him when I can. Um, he's just released a new song called Own It featuring Ed Sheeran and Burner Boy. I think it's really interesting how Ed Sheeran has done all these collabs recently as well. It's quite, it's quite funny. Um, so yeah, this is Own It by uh, Stormzy featuring Ed Sheeran and Burner Boy. <laughs> Up, light us up, one time light us up Pulled up in the party when you saw me, I was lighting up my J So go ahead and brighten up my day Light is in the air when you're lighting up the rave And it's feeling like I met you here before Girl, I feel your presence when they let you through the door Never had a brother give you everything and more So I take a little piece and then the rest of it is yours, me and more I don't care when I don't tell you But can you taste and I play I don't know where to you They do me with just this guy got my brain Loving when I put you in your place I can tell you love it just by looking in your face It's the way that you wind up your waist I'm so in awe, girl, you never have to worry about nothing You know it's yours, you know you're on it Girl, you just on it Cause your body's on fire Show me how to control it And go ahead, you still think you're higher Girl, I love how you hold it I put my hand up featuring Ed Sheeran and Burner Boy. Um, yeah, that's a cool one. Guys, it is nearly time for Katie to join us in the studio. Tonight we are talking all about climate change. It is such an important topic to, dis to discuss um, because it's such a relevant issue and it will affect us all. If we don't start to take action now, then it will be too late. Um, I know it's a message that we hear a lot 
Um, I'm still wondering whether it's a message that people are really receptive to. But we'll talk all about that later on tonight when Katie joins us in the studio at 7pm. If you guys would like to be part of that conversation, then please email us at studio at solihullradio.com studio at solihullradio.com, sorry, or message studio uh, to 82228 and your message. Love to hear from you. Um, but for now, uh, before Katie does arrive, I want to play for you Foster the People. I am in love with Foster the People. Uh, they have kind of been my favourite band for the past few weeks. This is one of my favourite songs of theirs. This is Helena Beat by Foster the People.
We are right now in the beginning of a climate and ecological crisis. And we need to call it what it is. An emergency. We must acknowledge that we do not have the situation under control and that we don't have all the solutions yet. Unless those solutions mean that we simply stop doing certain things. We must admit that we are losing this battle. We have to acknowledge that the older generations have failed. All political movements in their present form have failed. But Homo sapiens have not yet failed. Yes, we are failing, but there is still time to turn everything around. We can still fix this. We still have everything in our own hands. But unless we recognize the overall failures of our current systems, we most probably don't stand a chance. We are facing a disaster of unspoken sufferings for enormous amounts of people. And now is not the time for speaking politely or focusing on what we can or cannot say. Now is the time to speak clearly. Solving the climate crisis is the greatest and most complex challenge that Homo sapiens have ever faced. The main solution, however, is so simple that even a small child can understand it. We have to stop our emissions of greenhouse gases. And either we do that or we don't. You say that nothing in life is black or white, but that is a lie, a very dangerous lie. Either we prevent a 1.5 degree of warming or we don't. Either we avoid setting off that irreversible chain reaction beyond human control, or we don't. Either we choose to go on as a civilization, or we don't. That is as black or white as it gets. Because there are no grey areas when it comes to survival. Now we all have a choice. We can create transformational action that will safeguard the living conditions for future generations. Or we can continue with our business as usual and fail. That is up to you and me. And yes, we need a system change rather than individual change. But you cannot have one without the other. If you look through history, all the big changes in society 
have been started by people at the grassroots level. People like you and me. So I ask you to please wake up and make the changes required possible. To do your best is no longer good enough. We must all do the seemingly impossible. Today, we use about 100 million barrels of oil every single day. There are no politics to change that. There are no rules to keep that oil in the ground. So we can no longer save the world by playing by the rules. Because the rules have to be changed. Everything needs to change. And it has to start today. So everyone out there, it is now time for civil disobedience. It is time to rebel. Hi guys, I am in the studio tonight with Katie Riley, a Hi. climate activist. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. Thank you for inviting me. No, this is incredible because we want to talk about climate change. It is such a real, such a relevant issue. And in my opinion, we aren't talking about it enough, even now. Okay. When it's at its most popular, we are still not talking about it enough. Um, so thank you so much for being with us today. Introduce yourself. Who are you? How old are you? And how did you get involved in this? Um, I'm Katie Riley. I am 17 years old and I am a climate activist since February. So I've been striking since February oh. and I'm from Birmingham. So I do the Birmingham strikes. So when you say you strike, what does that mean? Do you miss college school? Yeah, I miss school. So February was like my GCSEs. So I just didn't yeah. go to every it's every month so I didn't go to a Friday mm -hmm. which was fine because I did catch up I did work yeah. it was all good so since February almost every month I've not been going to school <laughs> fair enough for all day no I did that actually I strike strike as well on Friday sometimes um, and it's it's a great thing isn't it actually you go out into Birmingham city centre which is a great city mm. lots of people are involved and um, you see everybody together and it's in these moments when you think, actually, you know what? Young people can do it. We will do it. And we are doing it. Exactly. Um, and I actually, I, I say I met you. I came across you the first mm -hmm. time. It was a few months back. Um, my first strike in Birmingham. And Katie was right at the front. <laughs> she was there with a the big megaphone and the signs. And all of her best mates were there. Yeah. And it was that moment when I was like, this girl's got it. Like, you are going to go so far in life. You're my age. And I think it is so exciting seeing young people around us doing so well. Um, so yeah, don't ever stop doing what you're doing. Katie's a great. You need to come down to the strikes as well if you haven't already. Definitely. Get yourselves down. Get yourself down. It's actually tomorrow. 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 What time? What time? Eleven a.m. Eleven a.m. Everywhere, and we meet in where? So this time it's St Martin's Church in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. But if you're not from Birmingham, it's literally happening everywhere. In the nation. And you guys can follow that all on Instagram, online. Um, youth Birmingham Youth Strike for Climate. Birmingham Youth Strike for Climate. You guys, if you are young, even if you're old, you haven't really got got an excuse no. <laughs> like get yourselves down yeah. there and let's talk about why we don't have an excuse so you're so involved in this why mm. is it at a critical point right now i think especially for us being young so if you look at the young demographic mm. if you've been to protests before it's definitely adult dominated yeah um we can't vote no so we cannot. <laughs> the next election we can't vote so we barely have a voice in mm. the first place yet alone being able to for mps to take us seriously for example mm. If you send them an email, you get an automatic response. That's as far as it will generally will go. Yeah. So we strike to prove that we still have a voice despite not being mm -hmm. given one. We're almost giving ourselves a voice in yeah. the sense. We've got thousands of children walking down these streets demanding change. And luckily people do listen. Yeah. And I feel like that's what motivates us even more, seeing that even though there hasn't been this massive legislative change, yeah. we're still getting somewhere at least and with that we've been giving an um, incredible voice mm -hmm. especially for young people it's absolutely insane being able to see for example when we do strikes we have yeah. an open mic and I think there was like this seven-year-old mm -hmm. like really expressing himself about climate change and it was absolutely insane because he probably has never had that platform before to be able to be able to speak his voice and we're giving these children these voices and it's all about being able to participate as you say in politics exactly. even when you know law might stop us from doing that 
Um, and I think that's such an amazing thing. I, I'm a politics student at A-level. I do um, politics yeah, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. On the same wavelength. <laughs> um, so, you know, it, it's such a relevant issue. And it's something... We can't bring politics into the studio. We're not allowed to no. talk about it. And I understand that. Um, but, you know, climate change cannot be a unilateral thing. It's got to be a collective effort across the board. So whoever you are going to vote for in the general election this year, um, the choice is completely yours. There's not but really, also yeah, vote. But vote for, yeah, definitely Register get out there vote. and vote. Make sure you are using you know, your right to do so. Um, because it does make a difference, particularly if you're in a swing seat area. It does make a difference. Exactly. Um, but you know, me and Katie, t Katie tonight will urge you to vote for somebody who can actually you know, put climate change issues at the forefront of their manifesto. Exactly. It is so important. Um, we've got a few things that we want to talk about tonight, mainly fast fashion, diet, plastics, um, because I think one thing that the media does report, we report a lot about you know, what's going on with the climate, but we are still at a point when I think people are refusing to accept that they have a part to play in it. And actually, True. you might have to give up a few things in your life that you like. Just the little things. To make sure, exactly, to make sure that we are still okay. Um, and I think fashion is a good place to start because exactly. I like clothes. Yeah. We all like buying <laughs> stuff. Um, but how does fast fashion affect our environment? Um, I think it's definitely an issue which is hard for people to kind of take in due mm. to how like we've been brought up. We've always been buying clothes. It's something that we, yeah. that we do all the time. So with that, we need to be more aware of sustainability mm -hmm. and fast fashion. So for example... If you buy something to go out, you can't just ditch it no. as soon as you've worn it once no. because that is just completely unsustainable. So, mm -hmm. for example, Primark. Yeah, oh, so God. <laughs> Me and my best mate, we always talk about... I'm sorry, I hate Primark. It's awful. It it's is stressful. so bad. It it's is, so stressful. Yeah, not only do you walk in and think, where, what on earth am I doing in here? Like, where are things? You also do think, you know... It's so cheap, it but is, worryingly it's, cheap. Yeah, it's, it's immoral. It is immoral. Incredibly immoral. So that's why on strikes, mm -hmm. mainly our route, we deliberately plan <laughs> to walk past Primark. Yeah, exactly. We've sat in front of Primark many times. Mm -hmm. Security guards hate us. It's <laughs> great. That's a good thing. They get very worried, even though we're just sat on the floor. 17 year olds, scaring grown men. Grown I love men. it. <laughs> it's amazing. But yeah, no, I think people really need to consider things whilst they're buying things. So yeah. For example, meat, the food. Yeah your lifestyle, your clothes, mm -hmm. is something that even, it's not really that hard. It's just no. people need to get into the habit of it. Oh, so exactly. for example, using Depop. Mm, I, I love, love Depop. Depop. I love it. But like, it's so un underrated it because some people are just like, it's different. People haven't mm -hmm. really got to that point where it's like buying stuff secondhand, yeah. like charity shops. This is what I'm wearing my, my hoodie. It's like my go-to hoodie. That's, this is second hand. Exactly. And it looks great it's and amazing. I love it. And it's cheap as well. Exactly. Like Depop, it's... It's a win-win. It's a win-win. Why wouldn't And it's you sustainable it? and it's great. But people, I feel like because people have been brought up into a place where they kind of mm -hmm. have to buy stuff. So yeah. capitalism and all that. Oh, yeah. That was like all of, all of that kind of part of it. It just, it's just kind it's of It's cultural sad. almost. It's a cultural yeah. thing. And we need to have that shift in ideology. Yeah, um, exactly. And it is so important because we are running out of time. Do you like Stacey Dooley? Yeah. I love her. And I once watched a documentary about fast fashion that she did. And she said that there was an, I can't remember what country it's in, but there was a lake the size of Ireland hmm. that dried up because of cotton. Oh my God. Can you imagine a lake the size of Ireland? Cotton. Gone. Gone. It's gone because of our consumption of fast fashion. And when you put it into statistics like that, you realise that every single thing that you consume, whether it be meat, whether it be clothing, makes a difference. Exactly. Everything. And you have to pick and choose about what you need and what you want. Um, and that's a, you know the whole point about deciding, actually, it is going to be an uncomfortable process. Mm. We aren't always going to be happy, um, but we need to start doing it. You know, We have exactly. to sacrifice things. We need to get into that habit of buying stuff that may be a little bit harder to mm -hmm. find. You might need to scroll a bit further to find your size. Yeah, exactly. But it will be sustainable. It's going to be worth end. it. And also you can't just throw it away as soon as you're done. Sell no. it. You might be able to sell it. Depop it. it get some Depop. cash in get for yourselves, guys. It's great. It's a win-win. It's a win-win. On that note, I'm going to play a song for us um, by an artist called She Drew the Gun. Uh, it's called Trouble Every Day, and it's one of my favourite songs at the moment, actually. It is so insightful. Listen to the lyrics if you can. This is She Drew the Gun, Trouble Every Day. Well, I'm about to get upset from watching my TV.
Checking out the news until my eyeballs fail to see I mean to say that every day is just another rotten mess When's it gonna change, my friend, is anybody's guess So I'm watching and I'm waiting, hoping for the best Think I'll even go to praying every time I hear them saying that There's nowhere to delay that trouble coming every day Nowhere to delay that trouble coming every day They watch the riots and the busies on the street I watch them throwing rocks and stuff and choking in the heat I listen to reports about the whiskey passing round Seeing the smoke and fire and the market burning down Watch while everybody in the street would take a turn To stomp and smash and crash and bash and slash and burst and burn And I'm watching and I'm waiting, hoping for the best Think I'll even go to praying every time I hear them saying that There's no way to do She drew the gun, if I can actually read. <laughs> that was the wrong way around. Um, guys, I'm in the studio with Katie Riley, a climate activist and all-round amazing young woman. Um, and so we're really privileged to have her in the studio tonight because we are talking all about climate change. We've just been discussing fast fashion um, and talking about how we need to make uncomfortable decisions to make sure that we stay alive, basically. <laughs> um, not, to, not to play about lightly. Um, because the issue is, I read an article the other day that said something ridiculous like, we are now approaching 3.5 degrees. Yeah. And tipping point, to let you all know, is 1.5 degrees. So how, how are we still going backwards? We are not moving forwards and it's worrying. And what will the effects be in our lifetime? It's incredibly worrying to the point where I can't physically understand mm. why people aren't kind of being more alarmed. No. Um, the strikes are one thing. However, we ha only can go so far with politicians. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think the fact that they're not worried or they're worried to an extent is very concerning. If we do, if it does happen, and I think when it does, I think people will click. Yeah, begin so, to for example, when the Amazon was on fire, oh whether it was due to climate change or not, the conspiracy people say it was, Mm -hmm. people picked up on it but it was too late mm -hmm. so i feel like things like that will happen so we'll have extreme weather conditions we'll have things where it's like catastrophic mm. catastrophic events which even though it won't affect us considering we're in the midlands nothing is really yeah. 
incredibly catastrophic going to happen to us it's going to get to a point where people with from like low income countries yeah. I mean, it's happening now you're yeah, saying exactly. when it's happening right now they what? have like zero yeah. they have not had zero carbon emissions whatsoever mm-hmm. yet they're still the ones where which are getting impacted most which is incredibly worrying mm-hmm. and they don't have the capacity with tele- to actually defend themselves against exactly that. so i think the only point where people are going to become alarmed is when it's too late. It begins to affect us. I mean, we're going to see an increase in climate refugees over the next few years, and that is a fact. Uh, and again, I can't bring politics into this, but think about the society we have right now and think about the difficulty and the debate we have about refugees and immigrants coming into the country. That may well be am- amplified in the 100%. next few years because of climate change. Um, and, you know, we're talking about low income countries. Even places like America and Australia yeah. are seeing wildfires. And guys, it's not just us who live on this planet. We've got a right to defend the animals and the nature exactly. that the, we share it, it with. The koalas. The koalas. Yeah, My the mate koala. actually sent me a video. She was crying. She was like, this is horrendous. Like, How can we sleep at night knowing that this is happening? Exactly. Animals are becoming extinct. Mm-hmm. Their habitats are being literally destroyed. Yeah. Yet we're still just wandering around aimlessly thinking yeah. about other things. And we've got such a responsibility. Um, the Green Greenpeace, I follow them, I'm sure you do. Yeah, They've definitely. got a kind of journalist section, an investigati- investigative journalist section called Unearthed. Mm. Give that a read. It's some really insightful stuff on there. Um, and there was one article about how our plastic waste has ended up in an illegal dump in Malaysia. How does that happen? Mm-hmm. How does that happen? And um, So everything that you put in the bin, everything that you consume... When you make that decision to get that plastic bag at Sainsbury's or Tesco or wherever you shop, you are making a difference because that plastic bag will end up somewhere. And when you put it in the bin, when you don't recycle, it has a massive, profound effect. It might not feel like it in your day-to-day life, but the results are, you know, catastrophic at times, as we've just been discussing. Um, Bringing it back to fast fashion, I've got a statistic here from Greenpeace. In the last 15 years, the production of clothing has doubled. And at the same time, between the year 2000 and 2015, the number of times a garment was worn before it was thrown out decreased by 36%. So people are chucking things out more than they used to and without recycling and and updoing. Have you got any tips about... We talked about Depop. Depop, But sharing with friends as well, guys. You know, I just came back from Gambia with my college... Um, and me and my mate Anya, we kind of ran out of clothes halfway through the week. Yeah. So we swapped and we made new outfits with what exactly, we've got. With yeah. what we've got. Um, and if you go to parties, I'm sure you all do, don't buy a new out- outfit every week from pr- Pretty Little Thing or wherever you shop at. Like, it's not worth it. Um, upcycle, reuse, depop, um, second-hand shops. Do you think yeah, there's a stigma shops. around charity shops? Definitely. I feel like now it's getting a lot better mm-hmm. considering I know a lot more people who do chop yeah. at shop at charity shops. But there's definitely a stigma around it. I think with like the early 2000s, yeah. when it was a lot of like, oh, you shop at a charity. Like, I know, right? It was just like society just being like, ha you like, you shop at a charity shop. What's your name? Like, yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> but really, it's like I know a lot of my friends do now, mm. which makes me so happy to see that people are kind of looking towards a different Option, outlet. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So I think there's definitely a stigma around it that we need to kind of dissolve. Alter. Exactly. I think it's all about stigmas. Yeah, all of it is 100%. about stigmas. Um, and you know what? The generation that will change things has always been the young generation. Yeah. Um, and if we want to create a new society and create new cultures, then we are the ones to do that. Um, so get out there and ignore what people might say at college or at school because it can be quite a nerve-wracking thing, yeah, right? Yeah. Standing up and saying, actually, that's not okay. And you're not as cool as you think you are because you're wearing Hollister mm. or Zara <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, but be that person because Katie's that person and she's doing so well. Uh, and she's cooler than a lot of people I know. So, yeah, stand up and, and be a bit different. Let's talk about diet, though. Okay, yeah. You said you're a vegetarian. Yes. How long has it been? February. Oh, my God. That's not long because I... <laughs> it's not long I started all. after Reading. Oh, okay. And so, basically, if you went to Reading first... Uh, did you go? You went, didn't no, you? No, No, you didn't. Go. Well, it was quite political, I thought. You know, the whole atmosphere was quite political. There was a lot of, like, you know... Brexit stickers yeah. and the bands are oh, talking. The stickers, yeah, the yeah, bands are talking a lot about Brexit and Boris Johnson was a was a common topic. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was one stand for Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. So I head over there and have a look at it, and basically I came out a vegetarian. Yeah, <laughs> I have I been that. ever yes. since, <laughs> and I cannot see myself going back to meat. No, I really cannot, cannot ever. No. Um, and I love meat. Like, what, there wasn't anything against Literally. meat. It wasn't. I just don't 
want to yeah. eat it anymore. And what is your reason for becoming a vegetarian? Um, I think, of course, I went through like a phase. You always get the run, but that video yeah, yeah. where it's oh, like, oh, like kind of like oh, like guilt mm. that you kind of get mm. for eating meat, which um, started it off. But my mum was like, no, you can't because mm. you're a small yeah. girl. Like, Health, right? It's not really healthy for you. So I think that was like year eight. So yeah. that kind of progressed into me. I mean, meat, the taste of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you have, you have other options. Substitutes, yeah. But yeah, no, so February is when I kind of realised, I was like, okay, if I'm really going to go sh- into this climate thing, yeah. I really need to take it as seriously I, as I can. You need to set an example. Exactly. So I went veggie. I cannot imagine going back no. at all. I love veggie food. I love it. It's great. Me and my friend, whenever you meet another veggie, it's like, like team veggie. oh, <laughs> do you like those corn chicken nuggets? Ooh, it's it's really great. Really. Because although... It's it's easy mm. to, more than you think, to substitute yeah. food. More than you think. Now, I want to debunk a few kind of myths about, about vegetarians. Um, a lot of people have said to me, it's about lo- eating local meat. Um, and I do, to an extent, understand that. You know, going to a local shop where the scale of farming isn't as bad yeah. and consequential. Um, but for me, the national, the, the national way in which we farm is horrendous it's horrific we i'm gonna i'm gonna read another stat for you you know um agriculture and deforestation contribute to a quarter of global greenhouse gas emissions and animal farming in particular is responsible for 60 percent of the emissions from agriculture which is just such a big number it's massive my sister lived in Colombia for a year uh, and out there it's a very very different setup very different society different economy um and her boyfriend who is colombian eats meat now, he lived in the countryside in Colombia where the farming just wasn't on the same scale as we have in the UK. And therefore, the kind of the consequences of that isn't the same either. Yeah. Um, so I do think it does depend about where you live. If you're living in Africa when there's like, say, Mozambique, oh, yeah. when literally, yeah, it, that is your yeah. option. It is different. But in the UK, it's a, you know, a first world country. We're incredibly wealthy compared to a lot of the rest of the world. We have the choice. We have the option. And with the choice, you need to think about what do I do with that privilege? Do I help others or do I turn turn a blind eye? Exactly. Um, And I think it's crucial that we actually begin to make these choices for ourselves because farming does have a massive impact. We talked about the Amazon. It is killing the Amazon. Um, So, yeah. I think also, like, morality, Yeah, I think, was a big part of it too. Once I realised that it was easy, Mm -hmm. you kind of... People turn a blind eye to, oh, it's a dead animal. But <laughs> yeah, really, literally. it is a dead animal. Mm. And I think that comes into it a lot with morality and sustainability yeah. being the two main reasons why. Because we are mm. literally eating animals. Yeah, and it exactly. just doesn't feel, to me personally, it just doesn't feel Not right in our sen- 21st century. I mean, rewind a couple of hundred mm. years, 200 years. Um, it was a different diet. We yeah, consume exactly. so much food. <laughs> so much food and are you eat how much do you eat meat if you're eating it once a week that's not bad are you eating it three times four times a day that's a lot you only need the protein amount the size of your hand that's yeah. what my mum always says she's a health visitor she's done stuff like this before you just need protein the size of your hand um and that includes other things like nuts as well so mm. you do not need the amount of meat that you eat and i think yeah, it's exactly. changing that shift again in ideology to think about it um and that brings me on to another thing fast food Oh. Greenpeace have come out with a kind of little quote called "Fast Food Fries Forests," yeah, and I adverts. love it. <laughs> yeah. I love it. They have their billboards Literally. everywhere, and it's great. Do you eat a McDonald's or Burger King? Um, I think McDonald's, not so much so as I used to. Yeah. Like before that, like what, a few years ago, yeah. it'd be like something that I'd, you know, do without thinking it's about. It's on the high street. It's great, but now it's more so, kind of more of a oh, okay if I like. This is where we're all going to go. Yeah. But it's very rare occasions. And if so, I mean, the veggie options aren't great. No. But chips there. Yeah, chi- <laughs> exactly, chips. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, chips. But um, I think with fast food, it's very difficult mm-hmm. because it's so easy. But definitely on a rare occasion, I'd go maybe not so much now, considering yeah. I think it was where I was. So mm-hmm. I was like constantly in town every day. Yeah. So it was a kind of easy way to get food. But even then I didn't go a lot. But it's very, very rare occasion. Again, it comes back to your choices in life. Yeah, exactly. And it's all about balance as well. Are you eating there every day? Are you 
constantly eat at fast food places, constantly eating just meat. Not it's just not healthy <laughs> either. Think about your liver, guys. Um, but it's all important. It's all about the choices that you decide to make um, because we live in a country where we have these choices. Um, what about plastic as well? Well, it's very, very difficult because of the fact that these companies mm -hmm. aren't, we physically aren't able to. Yeah. So, um, for example, Sain Sainsbury's or yeah. like your local shopping, it's all of it is plastic. Mm -hmm. You can't get away from it unless there's you a systematic it. systematic change. Exactly. There's only so far you can physically go without. Mm -hmm. I think also for people who are kind of, of who are have less money. Yeah, it's, it's very difficult to become vegan or vegetarian to access those options because it's so hard. I think it's very difficult for certain people to do so. So it's a lot easier, which is fair enough because mm -hmm. if you don't have that money, it's incredibly difficult to make these changes. Yeah, if you're becoming aware of it, so if you're making the conscious decision, mm -hmm. I'm not going to buy a plastic bag. There yeah. we go, decision made, done. But if it's going out of their way, for example, it might be a bus route away. Yeah. So then they have to get a bus, which is releasing more carbon, mm -hmm. like a car. So I think with that, it's very difficult, which isn't necessarily their fault at no. all. Um, but it is important because plastic is constantly going into our water, into the sea, into the exactly. ocean. Um, again, animals are getting killed. The coral reef is barely existent anymore. Um, and again, these are things that you said beforehand, we will probably, as a world, wake up to when it is too late. Yeah. Um, and we've got to think about our generation and then the next generation that follows. So our kids, what legacy have we left them? What of the earth have we left them? What message are we going to leave them? Exactly. Um, I think it's making conscious decisions yeah. yourself just to kind of try and reduce it as mm -hmm. much as we possibly can. Exactly. I mean, supermar supermarket plastic has risen above 900 tonnes, 900,000 mm. tonnes per year, despite plastic reduction pledges. Um, so yeah, a systematic change. How do we do that? Um, there's many, many ways of um, increasing systematic change, whether it's with legislation, mm -hmm. lobbying, striking, for example. Um, there's lots of things that you can do. We need um, climate equity. We need yep. a Green New Deal. Yep. In my opinion, this is what I try and fight for. We need something where um, if we're going to do systematic change, it needs to be right. Mm -hmm. For example, if we're going to change to more greener industrial revolution, yep. people with coal jobs, people who are in the mining industry mm -hmm. are going to lose their jobs. So we need some resources and more greener jobs to be able to sustain yeah. themselves, but also the environment. Mm -hmm. So it's, it needs to be done carefully and it needs to be done with the right people. It can't be, oh, we're going to increase yeah. more electric cars because clearly that's not going to help at all. It's absolutely insane that people think, oh, we're going to declare climate emergency. That's just a word. It's, if, there's a point of declaring it, but mm. then acting upon it is what you actually have to do. And mm -hmm. some people, declare it so then they can just like brush it Leave aside it. Done. done that you're happy now pr yeah exactly PR sorted. take a photo that's yeah. what happens very very regularly where mm. it's like we're going to listen to you because then you'll be happy and then you'll stop yeah talking to us you'll stop annoying us and then there's a certain extent where it's just a bit offensive it's a yes it's a bit because arrogant. <laughs> we're trying our best mm. and whether it's people allowing this systematic change to mm. work but also it's taking us seriously yeah. which is the downside of us being children mm. they legitimately don't think that we're being got it in us. and we'll talk about that in a moment but i'm going to pause again um, and play rap boy for you it's called revolution uh, again listen to the lyrics i feel like it's quite an apt one considering greta thunberg told told us all to rebel so this is revolution um by rap boy I was alright till they took me up my medication Started stacking up my generation And I don't know why
I don't know why Now all night sitting talking about revolution Kick a cup at the pop pollution And I can't breathe right I was alright to the journey of my medication Started stacking up my generation And I don't know why And now all night sitting talking about a revolution Kick a cup at the pop pollution And I can't breathe right Because Greta Thunberg told us all to rebel at the end of her 1975 collab. I'm here in the studio tonight with the one and only Katie Riley, an absolute legend, queen, climate change warrior. Um, and she's just doing so well. And it's been great to talk to her in the studio tonight. Katie, you are 17. Yes. Like, just 17. When was your yeah, birthday? Just September. September. So you're the older one in your year, yeah. the year below me. Doing A-levels, politics, yeah. what else? Politics, English and music. I'm doing politics, English, lit and history. Oh. So very, very similar. Um, and what's the plan after college? Where are we, what, what do you want to do? Oh, I'm t very torn. I think it's a big thing that we have to decide that we're not really kind oh, God, of Anna. given an opportunity to do. To it's breathe. Kind of like, right, okay, <laughs> decide, know. go. So it's in between politics and music. Nice. It's a very kind of two different mm, things, mm -hmm. completely different things. So it's not like I could... Do one thing and yeah. maybe like slip you, you're in a it. band, aren't you? Now, yeah, I'm in a band. I'll have to, we'll have to talk about that at another point on a different show, I Definitely. think. Because <laughs> normally, this is a rate um, a music show, music show but yeah. once a month, we, d we do something like this. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, hook me up and we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that later on. Yeah, um, I know there's two different sides of it. I'm a bit similar, I've got kind of my life could go in two different directions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think it's normal, but um. One direction your life is definitely going in is down the eco-friendly path. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and we're here in the studio tonight talking about why we need to start caring about our environment. So we are both young people in the studio. Do you think enough young people are making enough noise? Definitely not. Right. I think it's definitely needed. Mm -hmm. um, we have, we now have this platform yeah. that we have our voice. Um, it's been given to us. Mm -hmm. It's been something that we have taken and it's yeah. been something that we have try to do our best to kind of give to other people but um i think a lot of people hold back it's something that a lot of people have exam of course yeah. i understand you have exams daily day day to day bubble people life, are stressed yeah. or either they just don't care mm. which fair enough some people honestly if you aren't politically mm. aware or if you're if politics puts you off mm -hmm. it's something that is really hard to get into unless you really want to yeah. and some people have so many things going on in their lives being a, y a young yeah. child that it's very difficult to kind of go in their head strong also you have to know i feel like you have to kind of know your way around it to be able mm -hmm. to fully grasp it yeah. and if you don't then it's it's, it's a daunting thing, thing isn't yeah. it actually you know to stand up there um, but no matter what part you play, having a part I is a difference. Oh, 100%. You don't have to strike be... Yeah, exactly. Enough. Exactly. You don't have to be here on the radio or, you know, at the front of the strike, but just showing up and actually making a point that you are part of this team. Exactly. Uh, you know, I'm a history student, and one of my favourite things to learn about, you know, is in the past, what have young people done beforehand? So, you know, the civil rights in America, Vietnam, when young people get together you know, res results are made. It's insane. Um, and it all starts at the grassroots levels. We you know, we are at a critical turning point, I think, mm. in, in UK politics right now. Nobody Absolutely knows insane. where we're going. Whether Literally. you are in or out, it's kind of irrelevant, to be honest, because, and I always talk about this, I talk a lot at home about politics, and we're mm. always talking about Brexit. I mean, I'm sure everybody else does as well. Um, but I say, you know, it's all irrelevant, because in 50 years' time, we might not be here. Exactly. We're, we're complaining about who's... Pre uh, pre uh, president um prime minister but really at the end of the day obviously we need to have the right people in power to be able to implement the changes but the grassroots need to start screaming more about this and exactly. how can young people begin to actually get off their phones and use social media for something positive and powerful um i think a lot of people it's the way you go about it so 
what frustrates me the most is when someone will share something on their story yeah. and then oh I'm done with it there we go I've done my thing that's finished the Amazon's mm. on fire oh no yeah. moving on I'll just get in my car and go yeah <laughs> but then there's a point where yeah. you don't think you have that much to be able to do it but mm. there's so many things that you can do even the little things so yeah. there was a campaign for 16s and over to register to vote yeah. to prove that we do still care you can lobby you can email your mp even though you might get an automatic response it's still worth <laughs> something it's still worth something you can strike which is incredibly empowering mm -hmm. mentally and physically it's absolutely insane to feel part of the something. empowerment you're part of something um you can also just kind of be more active in reading about yeah. it so a lot of people just, oh, I just don't really know what's going on but Indeed, if you yeah. if you're more aware of it the more you'll be intrigued by it yeah. and the more you'll be interested by it so then you can further your like ability to be able to yeah. actually get involved and good sites like the Greenpeace I think is a really user-friendly website so mm -hmm. if you are quite, quite new to the whole debate then go to Greenpeace have a read um, there are some similar uh, websites even the BBC talks quite I think mm. neutrally about climate change it is important and we need to start screaming about this a lot more but you know I do think there is a bit of a stigma about the type of person who is interested in the climate um, and I know that after this show there's going to be people thinking oh it's just a radio show and you know I bet they they've got like dyed green hair or something like <laughs> you know they get some really weird assumptions yeah. about what climate change people look like or talk like or act like and it's just not true um, I think it's about, you know, looking at each other on a human level, yeah, and deciding actually we're all in this together, and it, it's exactly. time we need we need to start changing. Um, what do you think about Greta Thunberg? I love her, bless yeah. her. She's done so much. She started in August 2018, yeah, and for three weeks she went straight on strike, and yeah. then when school had begun, this was around about September mm -hmm. 2018, the more people kind of gained attention and the more people joined her so literally begun with her on her own yeah. striking that image itself is absolutely insane this one small girl with asperger's mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden very very recently yeah. she's got all this attention and i think that it's so difficult on her because there is so much hate that mm -hmm. comes with it and it, I can't imagine how she must feel with that pressure, even no. though she is so good at speaking. She's absolutely insane. Her speech is absolutely incredible. It really, yeah. She really puts her emotion through it. And even though she is this small girl, people are listening. They are standing And up. that attention, even though it can be negative, there are positive sides of it. People are listening. People are taking her seriously. She's been immensely supported, especially mm -hmm. now she's in America, I think. She's coming yeah. back. She's really trying to prove that this is something serious and she's doing so well and the fact that she's being so successful really shows that it can happen it can happen exactly i mean i think she's an absolute inspiration at the at reading festival i saw the 1975 with my best friend and they played the greta thunberg song mm -hmm. that we played for you at the beginning of this show and honestly it was full of teenagers <laughs> watching that show and a lot of people were crying a lot yeah. of young people were actually brought brought to tears I was one of them, a little bit <laughs> embarrassing, but I was one of them there crying because it's moments like that, like the, you know, the, the strikes that you go on, and we'll talk about that in a moment, but when you're all together, it's that overwhelming feeling yeah. of something is happening exactly. and we are doing something. When you're right there at the front and you turn around and you see literally hundreds mm -hmm. of young people with their signs and they're also excited to be there, you're leading them. Yeah. You're marching through Birmingham, second biggest city in the country, what you were 16 at the time yeah 16, 16 years time. old and katie is at the front yeah, leading adults <laughs> leading adults and young people alike um right to the, the city center what yeah. is that like when you look at all them it's incredibly empowering but mm. i saw i'm quite proud of like them yeah it's, it's very, very much like you've it's not just me on my own no. i mean in february it was just 20 of us just chilling with our signs. Mm. We're literally not talking to each other because we didn't know each yeah, other then. Yeah. We were just like, okay, what do we do now? 20. 20 of us. We've got photos of like before and after wow. from September with 4,000 people. It was absolutely, especially because being, helping organise it, yeah. it's a lot of like you see how it evolves. So we plan out the route, we mm. plan out the stage, we plan out the itinerary, we plan the speakers we plan yeah. where we're, what we're going to do when and that in itself is a 
day-to-day things. So every day, WhatsApp, figuring out with mm. a group of people, how are we going to make this successful? Yeah. It's like you put a lot of yourself in it mm-hmm. and to see that kind of come together so That's successfully incredible. is absolutely incredible. But then also seeing other people empowered by something that you've you've started helped, you've helped created. Help. Yeah, no, it's absolutely insane because... I mean, yelling in New Street is like one thing, but then having yeah. 4,000 people that support. yell with you is absolutely incredible. Have you seen a result from these? Like, ha- what have the adults done? What has Birmingham City Council done? What's the result been of 4,000 young people screaming about <laughs> climate change? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, been very, it's been very mixed. Mm. Um, they did pay attention to us. Yeah. So um, they declared climate emergency, I think, in the summer. Yeah. We went to watch them declare it we went to watch the debate and every single councillor who spoke mentioned the youth strikes yeah which was such a a recognition feeling Mm -hmm. because it was like okay it's not just this one councillor kind of being like oh did you hear like this like people (laughs) yelling outside hey riley that weird girl this weird girl like yelling with a (laughs) megaphone (laughs) oh no it's like five foot two child walking around no um, a lot (laughs) yeah (laughs) so it's like um they mentioned it all and it was like you're actually listening to us yeah. it's absolutely insane and the things that they've promised so the task force for mm-hmm. example is something which we're working with them to figure out how we go about it and how we can get birmingham into a more sustainable economy mm-hmm. where people it's easy for people to be able to be sustainable for example the 50 bus yeah that's like electric now it's appealing it's got wi-fi yeah. it's great Social Those media. It's great. But um, then there's like another thing where it's just a bit like you've declared it, but no one knew you declared it. Yeah. So when I was on stage with 4,000 people, I said, put your hand up if you knew Birmingham declared climate emergency. And I'd say one quarter oh of the people were like, yeah, OK, I knew. Yeah, I know people don't even know what climate emergency is. What does it mean? It's you just know? like so difficult for, pe- to, for people to comprehend because they're not been given this awareness and I think that's what they need to do or even the kind of the achievements that they want to achieve so um, we went to see the um, combined authority of West Midlands which was full of councillors full of constituencies it was great it was really nice to see even though they're all old white men (laughs) we move it's fine it's okay they (laughs) they said I think the target was 2040 which mm. is like okay so like yeah, that's yeah. somewhere but it's absolutely it's appalling that you think it's that's too, like it's doable it is too 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 it's too just late. not good it's i think it's not happening they just kind of like put it they're like oh we'll do it 2040 we'll do it 2050. does it feel like they just right. picked a number out yeah. and thrown it at you Fully, they're like oh we'll do that just so you'll keep quiet and stop yelling mm. they'll be like oh, okay we'll do that there and then when it comes to two years we'll, we'll, we'll start. kind of like have a look at it again and see if you guys have like stopped shouting so the thing is, we can't stop shouting. No. Because we haven't achieved what we want to achieve yet. And sadly, I don't think it's going to be an overnight thing. Um, Absolutely not. One thing that I have noticed, perhaps, particularly in my college, a few months ago, when that first climate strike began to happen, loads of people from college were going. Yeah. And now I barely know anybody who goes. Oh, okay. That's and so weird. Maybe it's just my college. I don't know. Maybe. Um, but have you seen an increase in momentum or a, a decrease in that momentum? I think it was like a little wave. Yeah. So February, there was like 20. March, there was like 1,000. Yeah. That was like our best one because we didn't think we had the capability of like creating mm. this amount of people. We had no idea what we were doing. No. It was chaos. But <laughs> we, we got through, and in the end, it was quite successful. And then it dipped mm-hmm. quite immensely. So it dipped quite a bit, but we still tried to actively do things. Mm-hmm. We still tried to actively show that we support whatever everyone else was doing. And then all of a sudden, September happened, and we had 4,000 people in Victoria Square, which to me was... Absolutely insane. From like 20, a cluster of 20 yeah. of us talking to like, I think there's like a video of us on like a BBC <laughs> News just kind of like going. <laughs> and we, we all like, did, we didn't know what was going on. And everyone was like, oh, like, do you have any facts? <laughs> so, so I looked up on like, I don't know, NASA. And I was like, we've got 12 years. So I ki- in probably every yeah. clip that you see, it's just us going, we've got 12 years. Yeah. That's all we know kind of thing. Yeah. But then now we've got like 4,000 people, a massive stage, a 
team who work so well together and then just seeing people kind of care but it has definitely dipped or people kind of go oh and they go like oh here we go again she's on it on a story like oh here she don't goes. stop but like no i think it just depends on what time of the month it is yeah. so a lot of people it dipped because of like exams it might dip because of mops it's understandable so it's definitely very it's definitely understandable it varies a lot but when it is big and when we put a lot of effort into it mm. it's definitely like something that's successful and i think you know even I've got sat here a few ideas that we that that we that could be implemented to draw more people into it. Yeah. But the bottom line is we cannot stop screaming about this. We have to keep going. When is the next climate strike? It's tomorrow. Tomorrow. We did mention that earlier. Yeah. Tomorrow, which tomorrow. means actually, um, I know the people at Solihull Six Farm College. You are not at college tomorrow because um, it's closed. Yeah. Some people have a day yeah, off. Yeah. Exactly. So. so looking at all you guys, um, there's literally no excuse. There's I will no try reason. get myself down. I actually will come. What time mm. is it? It's 11 a.m. 11 a.m. it's very difficult because oh of the German market. Oh, of course, yeah. Yeah, we, like, forgot about it. And then we're like, oh, wait, <laughs> there's, like, stalls everywhere. Oh, no. Which, I mean, it can, can be kind of good because there's, like, lots of people there. Yeah. But it's we have to kind of tread carefully Literally. because we are, like, rebelling. We are these yeah. children yelling in the streets. You are making At one noise. point, <laughs> we're going to be a nuisance. And it has been picked up many times mm. by many important people yeah. in Birmingham where it's like you guys need to be more careful we honestly don't care Katie's on a wanted list <laughs> <laughs> yeah you just see me just like I'm wanted by all the councillors <laughs> no it's very it's a lot like if you go it's great it's really fun mm -hmm. but I think some people for example I have a strike every single yeah. month I've done most of them mm -hmm. but if you choose if you choose your day if you go oh, okay I'll go to this one and you set your day, it can it could be a fun time. Make a yeah. sign, Make you know, sign have making some fun. fun. Sign making is a lot of fun. Get ready, bring some, I think last time in September, we kind of created a campaign called Make Make Some Noise. Mm -hmm. And we I were like, that. bring pe people bring stuff. So some people brought like pots and pans. Yeah. And we're just like, I was like, wow, I can't believe you actually took this seriously. <laughs> like, you guys bought pans. I thought all you drummers out there, get your face drum. drum. Oh yeah, we have, <laughs> um, we have Elijah, who's our drummer, oh, yeah. oh, and God, he like brings his snare drummer. drum, and he like does the <laughs> he does beat. that. Yeah. <laughs> he does the beat, and then we've got yeah. someone who has um, this like trumpet, trumpet, thing? trumpet thing. <laughs> thing. So not actually a trumpet. Not actually a trumpet, but like kind of a, a trumpet. mysterious he trumpet. Oh yeah, we don't know where it from. <laughs> Just like this like trumpet thing that makes noise. So yeah, I think even though there might be a hundred people, there might be four thousand people, there it's are still ways it. we can make noise. Exactly. And I think one thing you did highlight there a bit is how you carry yourself matters. Um, obviously not everybody will agree with us and it can be incredibly frustrating when it feels like you're talking to yourself. Um, but you know, be, be polite, be calm and yeah. try and get your message across. But we cannot yeah. have people looking at us and thinking actually they are just a bunch of unruly teenagers. Yeah. I've been, I've been called brainwashed. Yeah. Which has been great because my mom, my mom always walks with us. Mm. She's the one who like crazy lady who waves <laughs> around. So in September we had stewards, yeah, yeah. which is very like you know we Formal. have stewards now <laughs> and we have like a massive sign that we Kate's made. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, it used to be like a fabric, it's mm. like a bed sheet, yeah, and we wrote Birmingham New Step kind of. Now we have like a proper sign because we've got like money and we're like, let's get a sign. And <laughs> splash out a bit. <laughs> yeah, splash out, get a sign. So now we have that to control mm. the crowd and we have stewards. But it's a lot like you just have to get involved as much as possible. And with that, you just need to be aware of situations. You need to be aware of what's going on. And it is completely safe. Yeah. I think a lot of people mm. worry, but... As I said, like it's I'm, it's like I'm like a mom, yeah. so I think what happens is sometimes there are people who try and take advantage mm -hmm. of our strikes. So you'll see the stalls. Sometimes you'll see yeah. the stalls, yeah, and they'll be giving things out. They're like not part of us no. whatsoever. They bandwagon on, like everything. It, it happens. It, it it makes sense. I'm like, okay, you do your thing, but then I think it's just like, you know, I'm like a mom. Please yeah. don't take advantage of. Something these, you've these created. children and it's um very much like if anything does happen i do my best to stand up and say no this mm -hmm. is not happening you cannot take advantage of these people no so a lot of people's worries are it is unsafe but it's very safe <laughs> i promise it's it's a lot of fun as well 
It's so fun. I, I went and it was really fun. It's so fun. Bring good day I out think with bring your, your friends. If you're on it alone, it's okay. But if you bring your friends... It's ten times better. It's ten and one times thing better. I always think about, you know when you read your textbooks in school and there's always like those photos of the young teenagers and they're like, mm. oh, I don't know, Rosa Parks wasn't a teenager, but she was an icon. Y- you know, when in 10, 15 years' time, 20, 30 years' time, we get those textbooks out... You lot will be at the front. Yeah, no, I've You'll been be in assembly, there. apparently. Yeah, literally, like, people have been literally. like, I saw you in assembly the other day. Like, in assembly, that was weird. I was like, That's what are you on about? Yeah. Like, TV a lot as well. My teachers have been like, I saw you on TV. And I'm like, oh, no. So, you know, you have these photos on your bedroom wall and think, I was there. Yeah. And I actually played a part. The so movement is absolutely insane. Exactly, and that's exciting. Involved. So, really, you do have an impact. I want to play for us now. Do you know the Big Moon? Have you heard of them? No. You need to listen to them. I think you would like him. They're an all four uh, female band. Oh, okay. Very indie, really mm. cool. Um, and this song's actually all about being a little bit dragged down by the world, all the okay. different problems. And it's about that one person in, the light, in your life that brings in the light and happiness. Aww. So it's called Your Light. And I thought it's quite a nice one for tonight. So this is Your Light by the Big Moon. <laughs>
with their song, Your Light. It's quite apt because it's all about a world that is kind of depressing at times, but about that one person who comes in and makes everything better. Um, and for me, that person is Katie, who's in the studio with me tonight. She's making everything better for young people like you and me and for older people because we are causing noise about the climate change crisis. It is a crisis. Um, I'm going to say the biggest battle that humanity has ever had to face. Um, World War, you know, <laughs> it's, it's, different. it's a different ball game because mm. it's, we're fighting nature and not people. Exactly. Um, and it will have a profound and lasting impact on the way that we live our lives for the, for the rest of the existence of this earth. Exactly. Um, and we have got a choice to make. Unfortunately, we've only got about three minutes, two minutes now on the show. Mm. Um, but Katie, this has been a great chat. It's I've really enjoyed so myself. Yeah. One of my favourite shows. And we have just been discussing tonight. I'm going to tell you all here because I can't, I'm not patient, so I can't keep it a secret. Um, but we think it would be a good idea to come into the studio once a month and do something like this regularly. Definitely. So this will definitely not be the last of Katie that you've seen mm. or heard on the radio tonight. Um, this girl's going to blow up as well. So keep your eyes on Katie Riley. Follow her on Instagram. Um, and make sure that you get down to the climate strikes whenever you can. The next one is Definitely. tomorrow. But if not, every month. Every month, yeah. If not every month, just regularly, as best as you can. Um, you know, we are at a critical turning point. The deforestation of the Amazon is at the highest it's ever been. Um, fast fashion is a <laughs> crucial and uh, incredibly important issue that we need to tackle. Um, the way you eat, your diet, the meat that you consume, it all adds up and makes a difference. We've been talking about that all tonight. Um, so follow in in Katie's footsteps. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. It has oh, been a privilege. So um, and hopefully see you soon. Fingers definitely, crossed. definitely. And um, we've got last song tonight. It's called The Kids Are Coming. It's by Tones and I. And you know what? Without being a bit, well, I am going to be cheesy. We are coming, though, aren't we? Young people definitely. are here We're to stay. We're not going to stop. We're not going to stop. Um, and so, yeah, this is not the last you've heard of us. Thank you so much. This has been uh, That Thursday Show with me, Kate Sinclair, and Katie Riley. The kids are coming by Tones and I. See you next week, same time. Who wants to listen to the kids these days? Yeah, the fibs these days. Yeah, they say that we're all the same. But they're the ones to blame. The young as if we killed someone But we don't need your guns We're all too busy on the run Trying to be someone The kids are coming The kids are gunning The kids are running The kids are coming The kids are the kids are gone The kids are running The kids are coming for you Now you've gone and done it and we locked you in the basement Marching through the streets is
Solihullradio.com